everyone you're yeah, welcome to math as a note i hope you guys are doing well so today in this video we are doing the gate english 2022 pyqp analysis right so all of you who are preparing for gate english this is going to be immensely helpful for all of you right and uh, do join me on my telegram channel right you go on the telegram telegram you must have the app and search there my professor note ugc net english right you search this keyword there and you will find my channel and join it all right so let's begin now okay so here we have the first question he who is unable to live in society or who has no need because he is sufficient for himself must be either a beast or a god a person who can live by themselves alone either he will be a beast or a god right otherwise you won't be able to you know live by yourself without being dependent on society these words are said by the aristotle here right here you have the four option all of these are the very important critiques of uh, of the literature and the philosophy but these words are coming from the aristotle right so you see the criticism plays a very important role in your net and gate examination and these words he has said in his work called the politics in the book 1 second part he discusses the nature of human being as a as a political animal and explores the uh, the concept related to society community and human relationship because hum agar ek society mein reh rahe hain so you know we should be socializing without that we won't be able to live in a society it will not be called you know uh, then a sociable or very much a civilized society because you're just very much uh, you know very self centric and if you're that kind of of person either you are a beast or a god so try to be human hum dekhte hain ki log aajkal apne apne mein hi andar hi andar rahenge meditation ek room mein baith ke kar rahe hain uh ek kissa hai main aapko aage sunaunga theek hai hum ek social animal hai so we should meet people greet people akele rehna hota to fir ke janglon mein bas jao theek hai uh, okay history is not made only in state craft state craft aap yahan pe government के लिए एक रेफरेंस है जो हिस्ट्री बनती है इज नॉट ओनली अ स्टेट क्राफ्ट इट्स लास्टिंग रिजल्ट आर प्रोड्यूस इन द रैंक्स ऑफ अ लर्न मैन जो वाइज मैन होते हैं दे आर द वन हु क्रिएट्स अ हिस्ट्री वी कैन टेक इट दिस वे नाउ नेम द प्ले फ्रॉम विच द अब एक्सेप्ट हैज बीन टेकन सो नाउ हैव यू हैव द फोर ऑप्शन एंड आई हैव अ वेरी डिटेल्ड summaries for all of them that we will be discussing here uh, but the answer here is the girish uh, uh, yakarnar tuglak he is a kannada playwright and uh, tuglak is called the play uh, which is about the corruption and the politics that resemble the contemporary days politics when the nehru was in the government and that's what he used to do he used to find a direct reference in the historical time and then he used to put play those characters and portray those uh, those times which uh, has a connection with the present moment in order to make a very indirect satire on the present day government okay so here we have the answer now some of you might say uh, there can be some of you students who find it very difficult to you know deal uh, in english to communicate in english to understand english but i want to tell you that without a language right you won't be able to survive then you will find it very difficult in your further journey right then it will be very difficult for you you won't be able to you know attempt the uh, the interviews as well so here the answer the line is from the play tuglak in the play the arab historians uh, barani gives this advice to the sultans these words were said by histo historian barani to sultan The play is about 14th century reign of the Sultan Muhammad bin Tughlaq in India, and his reign was similar to the reign of uh, Nehru. You know, so it was the main intent of the play to, to make an satire on the present-day government of the Girish Karnad. Time, 
right so now we have a 30 days in september 2013 a published play written by the mahesh datani right uh, he writes about the social inequalities gender issues uh, this play addresses the sensitive issues of child sexual abuse right he always try to aware his audience and i think that is the uh, the higher purpose of the literature to enlighten the people it tells the story of mala a young woman in her 30s who begins to recall instances of sexual abuses she faced as a child okay there's a lot of people who go through such a turmoil uh, you know experiences very difficult experiences the play delves into the psychological trauma faced by survivors of abuse its after effects and explores the complex emotions so, so that's what the play is about what you have to remember here the the mala and the play addresses the issue of the child sexual abuse that's what you have to remember okay uh, you know these are the things you should be focusing at and there can also be a question from his the time which of his play is about the uh, in which of his play the issue of the, the child sexual abuse is being addressed which of his play delves into the the psychological trauma about the survivors of the sexual uh, abuse uh, when they were child right so that kind of question can also be formed out of it right silence the court is in session original title is the Sh shantata court chalu ahe the marathi play by the uh marathi play i forgot the name of the writer very famous uh, writer i just one day may uh, just a few days back i made a shot on him uh it's a marathi play right and uh it talks about that how the women's are treated there are the double standard and the biasness when it comes to women right we always consider them secondary to men is a powerful critique of the societal attitudes towards women and the oppressive patriarchy pre prevalent in the indian society the story uh, revolves around a mock trial conducted by a group of amateur artists so it was just a mock trial they were just rehearsing this play it was just a rehearsal so during which a young woman miss benare is humiliated and, and judged for her alleged immorality the play explores themes of hypocrisy so here the character is a miss benare you have to remember the character right it reveals the deeply ingrained prejudices and double standard faced by women in our society so it is about the how the women are being treated in the patriarchal society here okay okay here i can get check the name uh okay yes 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 uh yeah vijay tendulkar vijay tendulkar vijay tendulkar has written this play in 1967 it was staged its date its main theme and the main character right these are the very important things when it comes to any play <clears throat> all right tugluk is a 1964 historical drama written by girish karna that we had already discussed but here is a much more elaborated summary of it the play is in the 30 scenes 13 scenes first stage in the kannada language in the 1965 and uh, then in the urdu and then in the 1972 in uh, delhi at the purana Kila. Uh, the play explores the tumultuous reign of the sultan tughlaq that we already discussed right then come the mukt dhara 1922 by the tagore uh, which translates to free stream the mukt dhara in english explore theme of the social injustice and a class struggle and the power of unity I think it was about the cast. Uh, the, the play is set in a rural village, revolves around the lives of the villagers and the oppression that they faced, uh, which is faced by the lower caste and the poor people. So the story is about a young girl named called Sita who belongs to the lower class and she fell with in love with a person who is from the higher class. His name is Sanatan. All right. Their love defies societal norms and challenges the rigid caste system prevalent in the village. The play delves into the complexities of the social hierarchy so you know this is the word here sanatana when we say the sanatan dharam which is the highest uh, the highest religion it is being called then how can you there there are divisions 
within this dharma there are the divisions there are the higher classes and the low classes if someone is belonging to the sanatan dharma then they should be then they should not be you know the division internal divisions in that uh, into that uh, that religion but uh, that religion is divided into the into the caste right when you call a religion like a sanatana so there should be only one caste and one religion then you know this is what my perspective when it comes to sanatan all right and i think it will resolve many uh, many problems and uh, many complex societal structures can be brought to a very conducive and a convenient state right uh, to make them uh, very easy to approach and it will form a good decorum in a society that's what i believe right the one religion sanatan dharma the third one who amongst the following popularized the term objective correlative the term is look so such a easy uh, type of ex, uh, the questions you get in your ba english uh, the obviously the students in the ba they they might find it difficult but they should not because this exam uh, you can apply for this exam only if you are student of the ba english owners and you must have been through these terms you know once in a while uh, and you know in in net examination they will not ask that who has coined the term they will be asking you question a bit difficult either they will give you a multiple terms and the and the multiple authors where they have where you have to match the pair or sometime they will ask you uh, that how objective correlative work what this work is what is the essence of this term why it was coined what was the main purpose of it so such a uh, a bit difficult uh, of the moderate level questions or a difficult level questions you get to see in net okay the term objective correlative was popularized by t s eliot eliot is a renowned poet essayist and literary critic introduced the concept in his essay titled hamlet and his problem which was the first published in the 1919 so t s eliot coined this term in his essay called the hamlet and his problems right so in this essay he said that the traditional methods are expressing emotion in literature proposes the uh, that they are not enough they are inadequate right the main purpose was here to evoke the emotion into the audience and the reader the way a writer and an actor who is staging who is acting on the stage they must feel the exact emotion and and to uh, to evoke this emotion they used to take the assistant of the outside situation they used to play some object in a such a way you know that you can feel it right to make you feel the pain of somebody you will show the person who is standing in the rain and there is a thunderstorm and he is in the ripped clothes so you will see the the way he the way his appearance is on the basis of that you will be able to you know to feel the pain because sometimes words are not enough so you need that visual too right so this is the kind of situations which are being created on a set uh the use some props and you can you know you can feel that pain then so that's how the objective correlative actually works uh objective means the set of objects and correlative which are used to create a correlation between your emotion and the outside uh, objects which you have set so the audience and the reader can feel exactly the same theek hai mm, the love song of j alfred prufrock by t s eliot in this poem the imagery of a yellow fog yeah so here is the example of the objective correlative so what they have used here they have used the imagery of the yellow fog the evening spread out against the sky and the streets that follow like a tedious argument are all examples of the objective correlative these images evoke a sense of melancholy so to make you feel that pain and easiness and isolation this is a sort of imagery which is being created it is the evening right and there is a yellow fog and the streets that follow like tedious uh, you know argument and uh, it makes you feel uh, the way a person is feeling a character in the novel is feeling so this is a sort of imagery and the situations are being created only then you get to see that what sort of pain it is right and the fourth question which of the following critiques 
a preferred which of the following critiques prefer shakespeare's comedies to his uh, tragedies right so there is a critique which prefer the comedies over the tragedies he called that the comedies are much more lively right and a more much more re relatable to the audience that is a samuel johnson right so he preferred the shakespeare's comedies to his tragedies and uh, johnson believed that shakespeare's comedies were superior to his tragedies and more in line with his genius and temperament he also believed that shakespeare's comedies were uh, lifelike and that's the reason he he, he preferred them uh, fifth question we have is about that uh, who who among the following has been credited with the uh, laying the foundation of the comparative literature by the russian formalist right so russian formalist credited the alexander Veselovsky with laying the foundation of the comparative literature in comparative literature you compare the two literatures right for say uh, you are searching on the gender studies so one writer you will take from india for example the vijay tendulkar another one you will take from maybe america for say henry james and then you will talk and discuss about their work where they have talked about the gender studies where they have discussed the gender the woman characters and this is what called the comparative literature right comparing the two different uh, literatures and the term was coined by the matthew arnold okay yeah one thing i missed to say that my professor note provides you the exam oriented study material right and that is very important to have so make sure you you purchase the material uh, the cost of the material is 4950 rupees right and uh, to get access to it you can just simply whatsapp me on this number 9625101499 right uh, so the, for the first time gate examination was conducted in the 2021 and we will be also solving that paper too and uh, here you have only 65 question 40 question from the uh, your subject and the remaining 25 are uh, based on the other uh, you know topics like your uh, you asked about the di's and your reasoning type questions and the grammar right uh, so those are your 25 other questions and 65 all questions you have here and there's also a negative marketing one third will be deducted uh, for the for giving the wrong answer okay now so the sixth uh, question was sixth question is sixth question is here is the sixth question it's uh, it says that identify the work from which the following excerpt has been taken right so uh, the, the excerpt says in a universe that is suddenly deprived of illusion and of light man feels a stranger he is an irremediable exile and divorce between men and his life and actor and his setting truly constitutes the feeling of absurdity this whole code says that every single thing is broken down right falling apart things are falling apart divorce between a man and his life so it is obviously the absurdity and the term absurd was uh, we came to know this in the albert camus uh, essay called the myth of the sisyphes sisyphes is the a mythical greek a character who was cursed by the god to to roll up a, a boulder on this mountain only to see it roll back down right he used to take the boulder up to the mountain and then throw it, and then just letting it go seeing it rolling down and then again bringing it up and then again seeing it rolling back down so, the, so that was the kind of task the Sisyphus was uh, doing and this is the condition in which uh, the Albert Camus finds humans that they are looking for something which does not exist they are looking for meaning in a world where meaning does not exist right so Camus defined the absurd as the futility of a search for meaning in an incomprehensible universe devoid of God or meaning absurdism arises out of the out of the tension which is the desire of for order meaning and happiness in a world which refused to provide that right so there were also a uh, few things which he said there was also a way uh, he uh, he said that that there is a way to come out of this absurdism 
he has showed the three ways one was a psychological suicide where you accept uh, the religious uh, beliefs and philosophical beliefs and you find the shelter under them that what the meaning is you go towards god that the god is the meaning second one is the physical suicide where you uh, you know you just given to the sorrows the suffering and the doom and uh, you just completely shattered and uh, you are you, you're throughout your life you're just crying in the dark um, right you let yourself self fell into that dark and uh, you don't find any conclusion this is another way that people you know they do suicide or just uh, start walking on a path where they is uh, they are aware that there is nothing but still they are walking so the the third one is the revolution right he, he called it revolt uh, so revolt is that that you know that there is nothing but you still you decide to live uh, as per your own norms right you try to seek you try to explore you try to find you keep searching for the meaning right even though there is not any but still you try you try really hard and you keep seeking you keep exploring so these are the are the three ways that uh, the albert camus has discussed okay uh, then the so uh, what i'm doing here is in these question you see that there is a question we are given and then there are four option i am telling you the exact answer but beside this we are also taking look at these four options as well we are discussing their detailed summaries because this is how you have to prepare for your exam okay yeah and so this uh, file i will also provide to uh, the people who have enrolled themselves to the mentorship program uh, there are a few students uh, who have already enrolled so with them it will be shared right if you want to be the part of that so you can contact me on the book given number which i have shared for the study material so now this option we will also be discussing here the friends kafka's the trial so this is a novel by him published in the 1924 the story is around the joseph k a young man uh, he was a successful banker who lives in the unnamed european city one day he is unexpectedly arrested by a mysterious agents from an unknown organization for an unspecified crime do not know for what he was arrested and why and who there is no uh, proof evidence for that the authorities do not inform him of the nature of his crime and he is allowed to remain free as the legal proceedings are against him unfolds proceedings were going on and he was free for that time but the later on he was taken in throughout the novel joseph k navigates a surreal and absurd legal system he attends numerous court hearings and interact with various characters including lawyers judges and blah 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 right the legal proceedings seem arbitrary and nonsensical so it was a satire about the you know the bureaucrats of a government the way the system in a society runs why is happening what is happening somebody else has done something wrong but you are taken in you must have seen this in uh, you know that 1984 uh, the novel by the george orwell that we will also be discussing here too so there is a, a person who was accused for a crime who was not in the country when that crime took place when that incident happened but the person was accused for that so do you see that this is how the people who are in the powerful position this is how they are trying to run the society this is how they are trying to run the system so it is a satire on such a procedures on such a system which is controlling us waiting for godo is a 1953 play by irish playwright uh, samuel beckett all right 1953 so it's a two act absurdist comedy as i tell you that there is no meaning but we are looking for it so it's it's a sort of absurd right we are doing something which make no sense we are looking for something which does not exist so that is a kind of absurd right that is absurd not kind of that is so the play premiered in paris in 1953 so it is the modern so uh, your samuel beckett was irish writer right he was from ireland the play is about two men vladimir nicknamed didi and estragon his name is gogo and uh, they are waiting for the arrival of the godo but he never arrives so you see they are waiting for someone who never about to come and what they will do what 
what will happen their life will be sorted out that's what they are expecting when the godu will come who godu is nobody knows even that but people are making assumption that is a god or that is a solution for all of their problem but while uh, once when samuel beckett was asked that who is a godu he said that if i knew i would have put that in the play right so the play opens with the two men sitting on a barren road beside a leafless tree sometimes settings are also asked mainly in the the samuel beckett's play the settings are asked Estragon presents the impulsive, simplistic side of two main character, right? So Estragon cares little about appearance and concerned about eating and sleeping. Vladimir is a careful, intellectual person and have the verbosity means using the wide range of words, jargon, the the words which are out of reach for the common people, right? and pozo and lucky are the two another character pozo is a pompous and abusive man while lucky is his down trodden silent servant so he beats him so albert camus we already read uh, i think here is the mm, so that was the answer i was uh, discussing something with you that kamu present three ways to confront the absurd philosophical suicide escaping the absurd by embracing the religious and philosophical beliefs second one was your physical suicide by giving in to the despair to the dark to the gloom to the sorrows and uh, revolt embracing life fully the, the third way is to embrace life fully despite its lack of inherent meaning you still embrace it you you are ready to bear it the camus argues the third option advocating for a life of defiance against the world he choose the third option the third way by accepting the lack of inherent meaning and creating our purpose our own purpose through passion so what he said that life has no meaning life has no meaning but we should create one right uh, that and creating our own purpose through the passion and creativity so he has given the here the importance to the creativity and the passion and the pursuit of the authentic experiences individualism individuals can find fulfillment and meaning in the face of the life's inherent absurdity through their passion and creativity myth of sisyphe challenges readers to find purpose in the act of living itself you, you see challenges readers to find purpose in the act of living itself the the life is a purpose in itself so just live here making it a profound exploration of the human condition and this is what i was i think thinking a few days back uh, i had uh, uh, some physical issues and you know, some health issues i had so at the time i was thinking really that uh, a man is made of his situation and his habits ki aadmi apne halaton ka aur aadaton ka bana hota hai or i think when you are in a pain in life you really know that what is the worth of it okay so d and then i was thinking that living life itself is a success the rest of it just a play okay the herald printers the homecoming 1965 <clears throat> is a play that revolves around a, a dysfunctional family in north london the story begins with teddy a university professor who lives in america with his wife so are you following the trail is a play by the herald printer when it uh, was published 1965 so it is about a dysfunctional family which is not working properly there is no connection with the one another uh, sort of have a fell apart the story begins with teddy a, a university professor who lives in america with his wife uh, ruth he brings you ruth to his family home to meet his father max brother lenny and joe so on upon the ruth's arrival atmosphere has been changed it became more uh, a tense and mysterious ruth is a very uh, you know a- enigmatic uh, a character a very you know very mysterious character and every every uh, every member of the family uh, is very you know is very captivated and uh, attracted by ruth persona so ruth presents disrupt the family dynamics revealing hidden desire power struggle repressed emotions all these men of society all these men of the family having uh, very feeling the passion for her to get closer to her physically the men in the family especially uh, especially lenny become sexually attracted to ruth 
and she manipulates them to assert her own dominance and this is how she established her dominance in a family and uh, the main character was the teddy he let it be in this way he let the ruth stay at home and he himself went on his work uh, the what does gyno criticism recommended as an approach to literature we discussed this term in the shorts right so considering women's literature from men's point of view no examining women's literature confirming gender stereotypes only no becoming more familiar with the history of women and women writing yes gyno criticism means a female framework for the women's writing seeing the women literature from the women's perspective not taking into consideration the men's point of view okay so here is a little bit of a uh, uh, description of it gynocriticism is a feminist theory focused on the women's writing and perspective in literature coined by the ellen shaw walter american literary critique she introduced this term in her essay the towards a feminist poetics published in this 1979 gynocriticism emphasizes the study and appreciation of women's literature what does it emphasize on it emphasizes on study and appreciation of women's literature addressing the unique experiences and voices of women writers in the literary analysis that's what it does it was a response to the male dominated literary criticism so they created their own form right so then we have the eighth one here identify the novel which opens with the following lines it was the best of the time it was the worst of the time it is written by the it is written by the charles dickens very paradoxical opening it has right it is a tale of a two cities right that is your answer so now uh, here we have the other four options that we will also be discussing and i think that is the very important part of this whole analysis right where we are getting to know about the other four important novels and works as well so emma is a, a novel by the jane austen published in the 1815 remember that set in the village of the hybrid right follows the life of emma woodhouse a young woman uh, who fancies herself as an expert matchmaker so she is a matchmaker here so most of the time at the, at the very beginning she was successful in matchmaking as she found a uh, a match a groom for a bride miss tyler right and she was successful and then she became very determined to continue her matchmaking uh, endeavors but uh, they but there were some of the matchmakings which didn't go well there were some misunderstandings between these couples and then she was kind of very demotivated but for herself at the end she found a perfect match which is the mr knightley right so the play is about no you know uh, is about the development in the characters it is also known the building stroman she is a round character like she changes at the very beginning she was something else she was thinking that she can do this and that she is perfect but over the period of time there come changes in her right she embraces the uncertainties of life so uh, this is uh, what this uh, novel by jane austen is then we have the wuthering heights is a novel written by the emily bronte first published in the 1847 uh okay so your task is that you write down in the comment section what was the uh, name of uh, what was the pseudonym of the emily bronte what was the name she was using for uh, writing or publishing her work right these were the three uh my, your three uh, sisters charlotte bronte anne bronte and emily bronte and three of them has taken the pseudonyms the different names for the writing because at that time the writing was not uh, you know allowed uh, for these women they couldn't write so they had to taken up the another name uh, to hide their identity so the story is set in the yorkshire moors of england the setting are important revolves around the relationship of catherine earnshaw and heathcliff remember this heathcliff and catherine's relationship it revolves around their passionate and tumultuous love affair tumultuous is a very disastrous or disordered disturbed you know <clears throat> uh the painful the novel is narrated by the mr lockwood so this is another thing you have to remember right mr 
लॉकवुड मिस्टर लॉकवुड इज मिस्टर लॉकवुड इज योर द नरेटर ऑफ द नॉवल एंड ही बिकम क्यूरियस अबाउट देयर लव स्टोरी एंड अबाउट द इनहेबिटेंट ऑफ द वरिंग हाइट्स एंड द ट्रश क्रॉस ग्रेंग दर अनदर प्लेस हेयर ही लर्न अबाउट द हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम द from the housekeeper nelly dean three things you, you are remembering here the date their setting yorkshire moor the wuthering height is the place trust crosses grange is the another place there miss lockwood is the narrator catherine earnshaw and the hithcliff are the center of the play and their relationship is the center of the play and the nelly dean is the one who informs the mr lockwood about their story but we are told through the mr lockwood so hithcliff who is deeply in love with the catherine is ultimately rejected in favor of the edgar linton a wealthy neighbor whereas he was a orphan your hithcliff the novel reaches its tragic conclusion with the death of the hithcliff who is finally reunited with catherine in death in life he could not but after death they both are reunited and now their ghost used to haunt this building and uh, particularly through the characters of cathy linton and uh, harriet on earnshaw the we get to see the the novel ends with the possibility of the hope and redemption through the younger okay so there is a hope and there is a redemption right uh, the punishment that you go through the younger generation so now the younger generation has to face the the consequences the repercussions of it whatever happened in the previous generation right so now the cathy linton is the daughter of catherine uh with the, another person that she was married to and the heret on earnshaw is the catherine nephew so now both of them are there uh they are the alive character in this novel the rest of them has been dead <clears throat> another novel we have here the time machine is a science fiction novel written by hg wells first published in 1895 the novel's protagonist is an unnamed time traveler who invented the machine that allows him to travel through the time he demonstrate the machine to a group of skeptical friends who does not believe in him they have doubt that whatever he machine he is making will it really work or not claiming the time is a fourth dimension the 4d the four shapes which has a you know the 4d shape we have seen we can see the four sides of it in 3d we can see the three sides of it okay the time traveler first travel to the year 8027018 right this is the 2022 we are living in and he went this ahead in the future and discovers a future earth inhabited by two distinct races the child like gentle eloi in this era there are the gentle eloi who live above ground and the sinister they are the sinister subterranean morlocks another character is the morlocks who are more technologically advanced and feed on alloy they feed on alloy right alloy becomes their food or create their foods the time traveler learns that alloy were once a ruling class okay they were the ones a ruling class the capitalists but have devolved over a generation right they they degraded over the gener uh, generation and they have become poor now and uh, and the morlocks have evolved into a dominant species right so there came a sh uh, the shift in the in the classes in the society in this era ultimately the time traveler uh, narrowly escapes the clutches of the morlock and uh, he got himself out and returned to the present moment and there he met with his friend uh, with a the skepticism they didn't believe in his story the novel and ambiguously it's a open ended novel we are left to make our own conclusions right and uh, and the thing is clear the ending was not clear that is ambiguous right leaving the readers to ponder the truth of time travelers extraordinary journey now we have to think whether it was a, a true or not right these are your open ended novels ninth question which of the following terms does not form a part of seven types of ambiguity diye gaye utron mein aisi kaun si term hai jo seven types of ambiguity nahi hai तो विलियम एम्सन ने ही वॉज अ फॉर्मलिस्ट 
ही हैज गिवन दी सेवन टाइप्स ऑफ एम्बिग्यूटी सेवन टाइप्स ऑफ एम्बिग्यूटीज का मतलब होता है कि एक बुक में सात ऐसे एलिमेंट्स होते हैं जो आपको रोकते हैं दैट स्टॉप्स यू टू गेट द क्लियर मीनिंग ठीक है एक मेटाफर होता है इट नेवर गेट्स द रियल मीनिंग इट ऑलवेज टेल्स यू इन इन कंपैरिजन दैट राम इज लायन नाउ द कॉमन रीडर विल गेट कंफ्यूज राम इज लायन इवन दो इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द क्वालिटी so the person has to be very intellectual to get the its exact meaning because there are the uh, a lot of quality in lion right uh, which that ram can't meet so so it creates a you know the kind of ambiguity the pun again sometimes we see that i say that how are you i am hell good hell good ab hell kaisa good hai so aapne mazak mein kaha but like the person will will get confused it has a double meaning right Similarly, similarly again, you see the similarities between the two different things. Again, you are not telling me exactly who you are. You say I am like a star. So it creates a confusion. This is an ambiguity. Similarly, is not a confusion. It is not an ambiguity. Similarly, is the imitation, imitation of the non-tangible, tangible object, which is non-tangible means, sorry. Yeah, it's a non-tangible, non-tangible object which can't be touched. For example, there is a Ben 10. You have seen cartoons. You have seen the, uh, you have seen the Ben 10. So Ben 10 is a representation of something or of a boy who does not exist in reality, but we start to believe in it. This is the kind of world we are living in, <laughs> right? And that is a satire on the media by the Jane Baudelaire. This term is by the Jane Baudelaire, right? Baudelaire. Baudrillard, oh my God, Jane Baudrillard. I have also made a video on it. You can go on my YouTube channel and go through all the videos. Just type my professor note post modernism, right, and you will find the video. Okay, here I have also discussed all these seven types of ambiguity. You can go through them. These are seven types of elements that doesn't let you have the exact meaning of the text. <coughs> okay. Similar like here, I have discussed metaphor again. I discussed with you, right? Simile, pun, all things, right? In short form, I discussed with you. In simile, we do like and as. In the metaphor, we do a direct comparison without like and as, right? So, which of the following poem have been influenced by the Hindu philosophy? Solitary Reaper is by the Wordsworth. It is not. Brahma is by the Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of the transcendentalists. who believes in the individual power who, who who does not follow the path of the dogma they said that uh, we have the intuitive power uh, to create a connection with the divine we don't need uh, those dogmatic and the religious way to you know to have a life of uh, very spiritual essence the curse of kehama is a, a, a poetry by the saudi and these two have the influence of the hindu philosophy and we are also going to uh, discuss them here so curse of kehama is the epic poem by the robert saudi published in the 1810 so the poem is based on the hindu scriptures saudi was and the english poet of the romantic school and one of the lake poet so the poem is 12 books with the first six dealing with the various episodes along with introducing the hindu theology story is about the kehama a brahmin priest as he makes sacrifices to shiva to gain power and he schemes his scheme is to conquer the death and attain amrita to become a god himself so this is a hindu <clears throat> mythological stories brahma you see the brahma the omnipresent omniscient and the omnipotent the sarvvyapak sarvagyani sarvashaktiman hai na and that is the brahma and when you get out of the trap of maya that's when you Get the Brahma. An American transcendentalist was the Ralph. Uh, so then, uh, this who were these transcendentalists? Actually, this is what I want to tell you. So that was a group of the American thinkers who observed the non-Western philosophy, were the transcendentalists, right? And this group include uh, many other members, right? Which includes your Thoreau, David Thoreau. who wrote the walden the book right the margaret fuller elcott elizabeth per uh, p body okay 
So what this Brahma poem was about? Brahma is the god of creation and is associated with the knowledge and the Vedas. Poem presents a faithful version of the idea of the soul's immorality, immortality, and which is stressed in the Bhagavad Gita. So Bhagavad Gita is the main <coughs> reference book. Okay, so Kubla Khan is the another poem which is the part of the option for this question. The Samuel Tyler Coleridge was the writer of it. He was a poet. 1797 it was uh, it was written, published in the 1816. Its subtitle is The Vision in a Dream, a fragment. According to Coleridge, Kubla Khan is a poem composed one night after he experienced the opium influenced dream. Opium means a theme. Ke nashe mein. Inho ne ek sapna dekha. Us swapan mein ne ek jaga dikhai di. <coughs> Kaise? Because we, prior to this, he was reading a, a work about the Shangdu, the summer capital of the Mongol Yuan dynasty. And uh, and after the influence of the opium, that picture uh, proliferated in his vision, and uh, that got double. The vision was very wide then. You know, when you are the influence of a certain substance, and uh, you're watching something very fictional or influencing, that will double up in your dream. <clears throat> so upon waking, he set about writing lines of poetry that came to him from the dream until he was interrupted by a person from the prolog. So there came a, a person from a prolog, he interrupted him and he was out of his dream and uh, whatever he could recall from the dream, he wrote that down and that is in your poem. Okay. And uh, he, 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 did not unpublish, he did not publish it, he kept it private. But then uh, on the prompting of the Lord Byron on his insistent, uh, when he insisted him, he published it in the 1816 right so it, it the this whole poem has a three stanzas all right which i have described here for you the first stanza poem is about the kublai khan pleasure dome so dome is uh, of the circular shape right vault shape right a circular vault shape this is what your dome is right that's where something of this kind right so that's where this uh, kublai khan uh, lives in his uh, pleasure dome built alongside the sacred river here is a river flowing right around this dome from everywhere and that's where his dome is okay and the second sense uh, the narrator responds to the power and the effect of an abyssinian abyssinian maid's songs so there's an abyssinian maid who is singing a very uh, enrapturing song very captivating attractive song right and uh, under her influence he started to write that then uh, we have here the third stanza uh, which is uh, uh, about the <coughs> detailing that how the woman was playing the duck limer so duck limer is another object here that you have to remember you know these kind of things are asked in the exam then we have the 11th question here we have total 20 question we have done in this uh, in this analysis uh out of 40 right the remaining 20 we will do in the next video so which of the following human behavior are important to a freudian psychoanalytical study of william shakespeare so freud used to talk about the psychological aspects so art of speaking obviously not changes in emotional states he can discuss about that neurotic behavior obviously so these two seems the accurate okay because the freud was about he was to discuss about the psychological aspects of humans mind and the human existence or the of of humans right so these are the other two things which are, are matching with his area of interest <clears throat> okay match which of the following novel author combinations are correct now here we have to make a connection so where shall we go this summer is by the anita desai right passage to england is by nirasi Chaudhary. here he had parodized the em foster's a passage to india right so a is anita desai b is a correct match jane austen is by the uh, jane austen is headed in the pride and prejudice and the mayor of Casterbridge is correct right so uh, which of the following novel author combination are correct uh, here at b the connection is correct at the c the connection is correct so the two are the correct b or c are the correct so now again here i have the detailed 
analysis of the option. Uh, where shall we go this summer? Is a 1975 novel by the Nita Desai. I remember this and write it down. Study with me when I'm making these videos. We're going to crack gate examination together. And do send me your feedback then when you will crack. Sir, we crack it. We did it. Right? And now we have got that admissions for our, our PhDs. Okay. The story is about a middle aged woman named Sita who torn between the wanting or to escape her middle class life and realizing that she can't easily. So it is the story about Sita written by Nita Desai in 1975 about what she is torn between wanting to escape her middle class life and realizing that she can't easily break the bonds that binds her to it. Right? She finds herself limited, controlled, stuck. Sita doesn't want her fifth child to be born. They're giving birth to child and she lives in this is the kind of world this baby is going to come. I do not want this baby to come into this world because there's nothing good, great to see. It's a very hypocritical world that we're living in. <laughs> right? So she withdraws the island of Menori where she spent her childhood. Beautiful memories comes alive at the place only where we have spent our childhood. Right? And once in a while, we have to leave that place, sometimes for a few years and sometimes for forever. Right? A Passage to England, 2029 page travelogue written by Nirasi Chaudhary. But the book is a vivid account of the Chaudhary's first trip abroad. It was a five-week visit to England. Book was written in the 1959. The book is a parody of the Edward, as we discussed. The E.M. Foster's complete name was Edward Morgan. Foster 1925 book the passage to India so it was a response or a parody of that right to which E.M. Foster's 1924 book <coughs> passage to India so make sure you read this book too take care okay the mayor of Kester Bridge is a novel by Thomas Hardy that was published in 1886 the story is set in a fictional rural England the mayor of Kester Bridge is a novel. Kisne likhi hai? Thomas Hardy ne likhi hai. Kab publish hui hai? 1886 mein publish hui hai. Story is set in a fictional rural England. Right? And uh, with the, the Kester Bridge, the person standing in for the Dorchester in Dorset. The novel is about the life of the Wessex. So that is the, uh, you know, this is the fictional place which uh, the Thomas Hardy has created and that's where most of his novels are set and but this one is the Dorchester the novel is about the life of Michelle Hench, uh, Henchard a hay truser who auctioned his wife Susan he sold her out because he wanted to drink some wine and in exchange he got five guineas for sailing his wife Susan and girl Elizabeth and then he just woke up when he was sober state and then he had a remorse and then he took a vow an oath that he will not touch liquor for 21 years and he become very rich he was out of that trap that uh, impulsive uh, behavior and he become very rich he become very successful and one day his wife and, and daughter came back but uh, <clears throat> He had already been with someone in, in relationship and then after 21 years, he again fell into the trap of this wine drinking and he lost his uh, life this time. You know, so, so this type of stories he was writing, which were very, which has a very, very, very painful ending where people are more sinned against their sinning. They are punished more than their uh, mistakes that they have done. Pride and Prejudice is an 1830 novel by Jane Austen. The story follows the relationship between the Elizabeth Bennet. Elizabeth Bennet is the main protagonist, the daughter of the county gentleman, the Fitzwilliam, right? <clears throat> Darcy, a rich aristocrat, land, uh, landowner. The two must overcome their pride and prejudice in order to fall in love and, and marry. So, okay, it's, it's, the story is about the relationship between the uh, Elizabeth Bennet and the Fitzwilliam Darcy, right? So, and in order to come together to fall in love, they must overcome their pride and prejudice. 
right so the darcy i think uh, darcy has a pride and uh, because he's a rich family and elizabeth bennet is a prejudiced he start judging people right but over the period of time there came a lot of change in her persona and her in her way of thinking she uh, she learned about the repercussions of the hasty decisions to jaldbazi mein hum jo nirnay lete hain unke kya natije hote hain hindi bhasha hai badi khoobsurat hai hai na and comes to appreciate the difference between superficial goodness and the actual goodness so this is is a sort of growth which came in, in her behavior and this is when she become unbiased unprejudiced the story opens at uh, langorn longorn longborn sorry i saw this as a h longborn the bennet family's estate 50 mile outside of london mrs bennet the mother of five daughters uh is excited that mr bingley a single man of the large fortune has moved to the is a sort of a uh the whole novel storyline uh but all we need to remember is whatever told you the pride and prejudice they both have to overcome that and where is the opening of it and for the for the rest uh, of the story you can read the novel i think you must have read this right <clears throat> this is a, this is a part of your curriculum in b english owners i think so 13th one uh which of the following statement are correct about the uh phenomenology a it is a form of methodological idealism seeking to explore an abstraction called the human consciousness b <clears throat> it is a philosophical method associated with the edmund Hus- uh, husserl yes it is it is uh, he has uh, invented this uh, Um, this discipline and he has explained the phenomenology uh, it it believes that the act of thinking and the object of thought are internally re- related yes it does it does i'm going to explain it for you so you don't worry hedger's being and time is an important phenomenological treatise supporting the stand of hassel now hedger was a part of this pheno- phenomenology uh, this term but uh, he whether he has supported the stand of hustle or not that we are not sure about so we will take the b and c as a correct options here so now let's see here phenomenology is interesting in exploring the fundamental aspect of our everyday experience the way we feel right that's what we observe in the phenomenology imagine you are sipping a cup of coffee right phenomenology doesn't look just look at the physical act of holding the cup or taste of the coffee but it delves deeper it examines it examine the way you perceive the warmth of the cup the way it makes you feel the internal action which is going on that is also you know i think that's what phenomena is the life is a phenomena the, like there is a cause and effect and that's what the study of the phenomenology is phenomenology phenomenology is it studies like the phenomena you see the phenomena which is a very lively thing so this is a cup when you see when you look at it if it is aesthetical it is beautiful oh, this is the uh, how this can be a shape of a cup okay if this is a cup right here right this is a cup this is a mug you have and there is a beautiful design you see here and the way it makes you feel right now this is something which bring this cup to life and it becomes a phenomena right it examines the way you perceive the warmth curve the aroma of the coffee and how the sensory experiences are intertwined with the thoughts and emotion something which brings us to life that's a phenomena is phenomenal thing something big right the term phenomenology comes from the greek words pain no menon which means which appears and logos study so phenomenology is a quite literally study of that which appears to our consciousness right which makes us think the key figures are the edmund hussel martin hedger morris merleau ponty these are the main associated figures then we have the 14th question about the novel chitra deva karuni wrote the mistress of spice right and uh, this is the uh, an experiment in the magic realism yes 
this is the correct one of it even though they is are the immigrant experiences but uh, for now I, I will go with the magical realism is but because this is uh, uh, around what the most of the uh, the story is revolving right so the chitra banerjee deva karuni is the classical work of the magical realism the story is about tillo a young woman from another time who has a gift for the mystical art of species right so Attilo travels through time to Auckland, California, where she opens a shop and sells spices as a curatives to her customer. These spices, you know, uh, they help them to to cure the the customers who buy them, right? Upchar, हम कहते हैं जैसे है ना? Fifteenth question. Which of the following are correct about the postmodernist critiques? Pandarva question. Pandarva prashan. <clears throat> Option A. They foreground fiction and exemplify disappearance to the real. What was the question? Which of the following correct? Which of the following are correct about the postmodernist critiques? Again, I will tell you that go and check out my postmodern uh, <clears throat> video which I have created. They foreground fiction and exemplify disappearance of the real, right? And they put forward the fictional aspect and exemplify the disappearance of the real. Because when you put fiction, it it disappears the real, and that's this is one of the characteristics of the of the of the postmodernist. They talk about the fiction within fiction, right? And uh, this is this is one of the features of the postmodernist uh, novels. they foreground irony yes they do uh, they tend towards reflexivity they challenges the distinction between a high and low cultures yes they do they tend towards reflexivity i think they do they do they tend towards reflexivity <clears throat> this postmodern way was giving shelter to all sort of perspective they were not denying anything they their mindset was of the exploration we will explore we accept we neither we accept anything neither we deny anything we believe in experimenting so the whole life is experiment why you are in a fight with someone if someone says something okay it will be we will just we will do experiment on it we will look into it and then let's see how it will turn up that was a kind of behavior there was so the literary theory of deconstruction argues that so deconstruction was what deconstruction say that there cannot be a fixed meaning right there they believe in the multiple interpretations multiple interpretations they never go by with the absolute meaning text are always heterogeneous heterogeneous means varied diverse multiple right so yes that is that's what we were disp- uh, discussing they they were against the absolutism right they believe in the varieties diversities in the different different interpretations the meaning of a text never relies on context they did not say that any system uh, any system for product production of meaning may be bound by context uh any system uh, if you are in the, the, the part of the mentorship program so student most of the time asks what is a deconstruction so i send them audio lectures and and makes their journey very much easy you know so you can also be a part of that you know the way simply by contacting me on my given number which is the 9625101499 <clears throat> third option any system for the production of meaning may be bound by context <clears throat> the any system for the production of meaning कोई भी सिस्टम है जो प्रोडक्शन के लिए बना है मीनिंग के मे बी बाउंड बाय द कॉन्टेक्स येट ऑल्सो लिमिटलेस नो दे डिट से दैट कोई भी सिस्टम है जो प्रोडक्शन के लिए बना है मीनिंग के लिए मे बी बाउंड बाय कॉन्टेक्स नो नो इट इज नॉट बाउंडेड बाय द कॉन्टेक्स टेक्स्ट आर ऑलवेज रिजिड इन मीनिंग नो दे आर नॉट रिजिड एज अ टोल्ड यू दे बिलीव इन द मल्टीपल इंटरप्रिटेशन they were very much flexible there was no rigidity so here is the definition of it so deconstruction is a theory developed by the jacks derrida 
argue that texts are inherently complex, ambiguous, never had a very clear meaning. So you see, and have multiple meanings. So when there is a multiple meaning, deconstruction emphasizes on the heterogeneity of texts, suggesting that they cannot be reduced to meaning, fixed interpretation. This theory challenges the idea of stable meaning and explores the multiplicity of meaning within the text. Seventeenth question. In the context of reader response theory, Lewis M. Rosenblatt, in her essay, The Poem as Event, consider that the reader should be, the reader should be, participate in a transaction within the text, it seems yes, act against text, no, be acted upon by text, mm, have to think about it, reject the text, no, be acted upon by the text. Mm -hmm. So here we go. <clears throat> In her essay, The Poem as Event, Louis M. Rosenblatt emphasizes the importance of the readers engaging in a transaction with the text. Okay, theory which she pioneered, so she is the one of the who, who created this theory of the reader response, where uh, the meaning of the book is taken on the basis of the response of the reader, that how reader interpreted, what is their experience of it, because the end goal of the book is the reader's response, because the reader is the one who is going to read that book. This is for what you have written the book. Otherwise, what is the purpose? The purpose is to have a reader of your book, have a reader for your book. And the way the reader will get its meaning, that will be the final meaning. Because that's where the journey of your book ends. It ends on reading <clears throat> and the, on, on the interpretation by a reader. Which she pioneered focuses on the reader's experiences, the interpretation of the text, considering the reader's response as a crucial aspect of the literary analysis. Rosen uh, Blett argued the reader's activity participate in the construction of the meaning through their connection with the text. The theory is popular in the United States. Its main theorists were the Stanley Fish, remember this, David Bleach and Wolfgang Iser. Okay. So the only one is that is this one. The C is not correct. Okay. Uh, then we have the Roland Barthes in his uh, famous essay, The Death of the Author. <clears throat> Roland Barthes. Okay, so death of the author means means that author has written a book with certain intention. But when the reader will read it, it will not read it by keeping the author's meaning is in his mind. He will read it according to his experience and his knowledge. So that's what the death of the author is. Right? The author is not living anymore because the intention of writing that work is not alive anymore because the reader has uh, you know interpreted the book uh, the book in a way which is against maybe uh, in terms of the meaning which the reader is giving to it because his meaning is different from the author so in that way it is the death of the author okay believes that the text is to be interpreted in the biographical context of the author. He said, no, no, it wasn't like that. He said that the book is a group of words mainly. Okay? There are some words written in it. Okay? And the, author is, and the reader is the one who makes sense out of it by themselves. Author is not leaving anymore because the author intention does not matter. What matters is the reader's ability to, to comprehend things, his knowledge and his experience regarding the words which are given on the book. In that way, they will, uh, you know, consider the book. So challenges the author's claim as cogito uh, or origin of all, uh, all knowledge. Yes, it challenges it because it says that you are not the originator of all, the, all knowledge right it is the reader now they will make sense out of it so it challenges that believes that author has a sole claim to his work it doesn't believe that it challenges it so it's wrong again this one is right here concludes that an author is an a typical product of his social milieu no right 
<coughs> death of the author is a literary theory that states that meaning of a text is determined by the reader's interpretation not the author's intention and that's what seen as a death right ki jo text ka jo meaning hai wo determine hota hai by reader's interpretation wo reader ki interpretation decide karegi na ki author ki intention and that is seen as a death of author right so this concept was introduced in 1967 in his book death of author by the roland barthes remember that 19th question we have about the the commonality which these three of the books have in them we see the george orwell's 1984 it was a dystopian work dystopian work in a way that it shows the disordered society all right people inflicting pain upon each other the society is going to the worst phase there is a pollution there is a overpopulation there is a global warming there uh, and the whole regime uh, having a control there there, there is a totalitarian uh, regime uh, people have no freedom to to put their opinions forward right in the baddest form the society is living in these novel margaret atwood henry's tale reflect the same sort of qualities <clears throat> that is a uh, dystopian as well right and uh, about mccarthy's road you will get to know here these are the example of the utopian fiction not at all these are the example of a dystopian fiction yes sir they present any idealistic picture of the world no obviously we have got the right option so it's b so the road is the apocalyptic post apocalyptic where there is a dis- destruction is happening novel by american writer Cormac McCarthy the poem the book is about a father and his young son who walks through a ruined landscape after unspecified cataclysm the destruction <clears throat> right and uh, the landscape is ashen cold dangerous so they have to keep moving so this is the kind of world that these books are presenting <laughs> now who are responsible humans for that so they are in a way alerting us stopping us to live in the anthropocentric uh, form where we are very human centric we also have to give the same respect to the other lives as well and their destination is a coast but they don't know what it's waiting for them there so they are just walking 1984 the novel by the or george orwell right again a dystopian novel book on the western nation against communist ideas and uh, the book is uh, about the negative things that could happen if a government exercise total control right try and leader if a nation has what sort of negative things can lead that's what he is uh, trying to make us aware about in this novel he feared he feared he feared <clears throat> 